And the big news is really on the program this morning at Farmer's Market. Dollar off pierogies. Three dollars a dozen. Three dollars a dozen. dozen. Various flavors. We've got, we got to figure out the math here. That comes yeah, out. Three dollars for each pierogi. Three dollars a dozen. Three dollars a dozen. Yeah. Three dollars a dozen, Carl. Do that math. Uh, now we've got a. Bill's doing math. Could do math for us probably, but I don't think I. Uh, Press the part is doing it left-handed. It <laughs> should, should get us yeah, around them. So last week you brought some pierogies over. They were uh, like fruit. We yeah, put yeah, raspberry cheese, sauce fruit, on them. Oh, they were good. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. But, uh, they have all the usual ones: the cheese, the onion, and the, all the other varieties. The and, uh, they're frozen. Uh, mm-hmm. Grab them, take them home. Well, this could and take Bill will come up with the unit price here for you in a little while. Twenty-four cents per pierogi. All right. I think that comes out to uh, less that than equals a quarter. A pretty good deal. Yeah, less than a quarter. A quarter with tip. Yeah. That's that's uh, a bargain of twice the price, I'd say. Yes, it is. Good deal on pierogies today. Come on down and get them before they're all gone. So Carl had an exciting week this week. Carl, you know, we uh, yeah. here at the Farmers Market and the Bill Yonka Show, we you know things just go from one week into another, and sometimes. Big important things happen and we don't pay any attention to them. But sometimes big important things happen and we do. We want to talk about it some more. So uh, Carl this week, kind of the guy, kind of helping to orchestrate yeah. a big news event yeah. at uh, Riverside and, uh, and kind I, of what's I, going to be an exciting addition. It, it will be. It's going to be a great thing for the community. We uh, had the groundbreaking for our East Tower edition, which is going to be 160,000 square foot of additional space for the hospital. Larger than the original hospital building was. Wow! And uh, the the main uh, on the main floor, we're going to have 12 new operating rooms, uh, which are going to be, of course, state of the art and larger. Right now, of these of these 12, the smallest of the 12 will be larger than the biggest one we currently have. You know, when they when they built the room, the ORs that were now in the late 60s, early 70s, and one of the additions of the hospital, uh, they didn't anticipate the space needs that we have now. And you go into the operating room now, and they look like computer centers. All the all the support equipment they have to, to, to go along with the surgery, so there's more room that's needed. Um, the surgeons want to be able to almost have 360 access around, so that you know there's more space that's needed. Mm-hmm. So the, we're going to have 12 new ORs, uh, and then also some new LDRP rooms in our labor and delivery area, as, as well as LDRP mean uh, labor labor delivery and recovery. Okay. Okay. Oh, so they do it all in one room. Right. Exactly. And uh, there's also going to be a dedicated operating room for C-sections, which now we, we currently don't have. It's this part of the, you have to. You just have the, the A and the B. And it goes to the, yeah, the A section, yeah. the B section, the D section in your case, Paul. But um, so these, these operating rooms are big enough to operate on a Buick, then? Is that what you're uh, probably a couple Buicks, actually. Okay. Yeah, they, they would be. Um, and uh, my wife was concerned that you had enough room out there that you're going to run into the river no, pretty soon. No, we're going to be okay. The, they they assure us that we're not going to have to change the name of this hospital to River Inside, but yeah. uh, we can stay Riverside <laughs> or River's and, Edge. Uh, River, that's that'd be the River's Edge wing, maybe on that side. And you still get the view from some of the rooms. So it's a very nice view, very very pretty view of the river. Um, and then the second floor, we'll have some new ICU, private ICU rooms, as well as uh, private. Regular patient rooms. That's, that's the way rooms. things are going in the world of uh, medical care. They are private, private rooms. Private it's, rooms. It's, you know, patient demand. People like that better. But also, uh, scientifically, they can show that a private room uh, increases the uh, improves the outcomes. Less infection rate if you're in a private room. Uh, the psychological impact is, improves healing. Uh, just to have private access, fewer medical air, uh, medication errors if people are in private rooms. Uh, so it's it's certainly a, a better way to go, and uh, we're working toward having all private rooms. And if you if a, if a Yonka is in the hospital, there's kind of a whole annoying crew that comes along. That comes with along. Right. Yeah. Well, now uh, now that annoying crew can just keep to themselves and it won't bother another patient. It'd be nice if they could apply that philosophy to the airlines. Because if uh, I had a little private cabin, I'd feel a lot better. Yeah. Now. Well, then the, the travel by rail, you know, and the Amtrak yeah. cars have that. You could do yeah, that's that. That's right. But the, the event itself, the groundbreaking we had, was, was, was kind of a special event. And one of the things we did was draw on the history of the hospital. The effort, and you know, I'm, I'm new to the community, so this is all new to me. Yeah. And a lot of folks who, who have lived here may not know some of the history about it, but back in it was started in 1958 when a group of, of folks got together and said the area was growing to the degree they really needed a second hospital. At that time, St. Mary's, the beds there were often full, and there wasn't um, the access that people needed as the community mm-hmm. was growing. And as they looked at the projections for how the community was going to continue to grow, they knew they needed to do something. What year did it open? Here. 64 is when it opened. 64. They started the, the, the initial kind of a search committee, if you will, 
Exploratory Committee in 58. They had the groundbreaking in 62. And one of the folks that was instrumental in all of this was a guy by the name of Jim Schneider, who was a bank president in one of the banks at the time and a civic leader and very involved in the community. And he headed up uh, one of the committees that was, was searching uh, about bringing a new hospital to the community. And he ended up being the first chairperson of the board of the hospital at Riverside. We had some great photographs of the original groundbreaking ceremony. So what we did was we took one of these pictures with the concept of kind of brought it to life. And we hired an actor to portray Mr. Schneider and kind of tell the Riverside story and talk about where we were today and how, how that, you know, the vision they had and how great it is to see that vision come come forth and, and how the hospital has grown. And um, so that was kind of a, a unique way to do the groundbreaking and, and brought in the history of the hospital. And it really went over well. So did our did our radio dramas inspire you to do that? I, I would say some of Paul's writings were were inspirational. Uh, we didn't we didn't work uh, Colt Remington into the groundbreaking. But, well, uh, no, but I'm sure you had some good one-liners there to uh, open no, it up. That no, worked we tried to, played it pretty straight. It looked like you had a pretty stiff crowd there just from the picture. You know, well, we tried suits, to loosen them up a little bit. We had a wet crowd, unfortunately. It. Uh, it started raining about 15 minutes before we started our ceremony. Well, so you were under the tent, though. We were under, most of us were under the tent. We had, you can't tell from the pictures, but a crowd that exceeded the tent capability. Oh, we had a pretty, okay. good, pretty good gathering. Um, but it all went very well, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of hard work by a lot of people at the hospital to, to pull it all together, and it, it came together nicely. And they were anxious to get started on the project. So as soon was as we were done, we started. Uh, here. What's that? Was it catered, and it did was, you bring was, us anything? It was. I did not, but no. it was. Had you been there, you would have been treated to some fine uh, hospital catering. Hmm. But that, which is very good, because we'll see oh. next week. With professional chefs channel. Yeah, yeah. Sloan, the... Sloan is, is outstanding. She does a great job. That'll be our first hospital representative in this challenge. Yeah. I think we'll be surprised. I think yeah. that, that'll be. Uh... And to wrap up, the edition is uh, opened in the spring of 2011. Oh, wow. 2011. It's an 18-month process uh, to, uh, to put that all together. Kind of going to change the, uh, the way we see the city of Kankakee when we yeah, drive on Court Street. Yes, it will. Heading, uh, uh, heading to the west. Yeah, especially coming down. 45 there. How tall is it? it is, it'll be as tall as the current hospital stories. building. No. 35 a, And this is kind of interesting, too. It's actually, the, the, build, the addition is going to be three stories, but it'll match up to the five-story hospital really? building. Really? The way they build yeah. stories now, a little taller, a little more support uh, equipment in the ceilings and such, and the ceilings yeah. will be higher, right. and uh, the, the, each floor will be taller. Okay, more headroom. So it is an exciting yeah, thing, good. and it's going to uh, have a positive impact on, uh, on the care that the community receives. Very good. All right, well, Carl, hope. not only radio sidekick, some people just think he's one-dimensional. Just, yeah, you think he's also, just a, uh, public they, relations. A lot of people think he's just an actor, you know, that we hire for this. Yeah, no, I, I, wish, I wish I made that kind of money. Yeah. He's, a, he's a real person. And uh, one of the guys who's making things happen over at Riverside Medical well, Center. And, talking uh, about the people yeah, that are right, making it yeah, happen. Explaining yeah, explaining what, 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 explaining what's happening. Yeah. That's what he does. Well, yeah. that's, that's part of it. Hey, we're, uh, you're listening to Talk AM 1320 WKN. Thanks for having us tuned in. We will uh, have more about uh, some local things going on. We'll have the Miller Hydraulic Race Report coming up at 8.15. We try to do that, the race yeah, report. Some exciting stuff yeah, going on tomorrow. Exciting, uh, exciting edition of Cops. Yeah. Cops with a K. Ooh, yeah. Our local small-town law enforcement radio drama. And, of course, the life of Carl for the ladies. The ladies do like that, don't they? They like Paul cars. Sells, anyway. It's hard not to. Well, it's amazing, you know. We sit here and people walk by and they ask you questions, pretty much ignore me. And all the women, it's just, hi, Carl, hi, Carl, hi, Carl. I've told his wife today, about this in the past and nothing's changed. So I guess they have some sort of agreement on this. The, we'll women, right back. the women go for it. With more Billy Hunter, I'm taking a break this here on Talk AM 1320, WKAN.